Great to see you in this new lesson. Here I will be talking about different scheduling methods. What scheduling methods do we have and what can we use? And in this video, I will talk about different topics. First of all, I will talk about the importance of scheduling. Why is scheduling important? Uh, what do we have to take into account and how important is, is it for our projects? We look at dependencies of work packages and activities. What is the principle of those uh, dependencies and how do we deal with them? And then we look at the early scheduling, the early scheduling application of the Gantt chart, which was the first scheduling, let's say, um, method that became available. When you remember the history of the project management, we know that that was about 1913, the time of the First World War, 1917, that area. And it was then used to plan, in fact, the different projects. Later, additional methods were developed. One is, in fact, based on what we call the activity on the arrow scheduling methods, which are the arrow diagramming method and the program evaluation and review technique. PERT is typically known by people. People still talk about the PERT charts, although it's not used in the same way anymore. But we'll look into that. I will give you some examples of those. And then we also have the activity on the node scheduling method, which is typically described by the precedence diagramming method. Now, why is scheduling important? Why do we want to create that project schedule? Well, first of all, the work breakdown structure, which we discussed in the previous video, provides us with a logical overview of the work packages and the work to be completed. It's a logical overview, but we cannot use that to schedule the project. In order to schedule the project, we have to see, we have to arrange them in a chronological order. And in fact, the chronological order means that we have to identify what activities or uh, work packages have to be completed before a specific work package or activity can be completed. And we're going to sequence them in a specific way. So try to find what are the activities that we have, uh, which can, for example, start uh, at the beginning, which activities don't have a predecessor, which activities have predecessors, which pre um, which activities have successors and bringing all these things together we can create a precedence diagram now when we look at dependencies dependencies is in fact um, an overview about um <clears throat> let's have a look at dependencies of work packages and activities huh? we have some things that we're going to do we have to do them in a special way the goal is to order the activities in a chronological order and we have to say for example or we can take consider many examples but let's say we are considering planting a tree. What do we have to do? Okay, we have the tree. In order to plant the tree, the first step is to dig a hole. We have to make a hole in which we can put the tree. Step two, we plant the tree. And then finally, step three, we are going to fill the hole. Now, what do we see here? What terminology can I define here? First of all, step one is the predecessor of step two. So before we can do step two, we first have to dig the hole. So step one, dig digging a hole is a predecessor. Step two is the successor of step one. So once step one has been completed, we will continue with step two. That's why we call it a su successor. It's after step one. And step two is also a predecessor of step three. 
Step three is the end. There are no more successors here, which means that the project, basically this very simple project stops here. Now you can say, well, uh, let's take out step two. We don't do step two. So we dig a hole and we fill the hole. But this is not possible because our project is to plant a tree. You cannot go to step three unless you have the tree planted in the hole that you've been digging before. You cannot plant the tree there before digging the hole. So this is the meaning of the precedence information. And when we have all the information from the WBS, from the work breakdown structure, all those work packages, all those activities, they can be published or they can be ordered in a way that we identify the dependencies. And once we know the dependencies, once we know the dependencies, we can create the diagram, the network diagram. Like I said, the early scheduling was with the Gantt chart. Here you see a very simple Gantt chart. It was already uh, done, let's say, before or at the time of the First World War. Henry Gantt developed it at the end of the 19th, beginning of the 20th century. You know, these things, you don't think always exactly know when the idea was basically formed. You see different activities and you see a calendar. And here, typically in red, we put there activities we call critical. We call them on the critical path, while the blue activities are not critical. These are activities which have flexibility. We will look into that later in this lesson. We also have the activity on the arrowing, or sorry, activity on the arrow scheduling method. We have here events, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. These are events. So basically we have an arrow um, which is indicating the work that is being done. So the arrow with indication of A between 0 and 1. 0 is the start event of activity A. 1 is the end event of activity A. And the arrow between shows the activity that has been completed here. Now, uh, the arrow doesn't have or is not related, to, the length of the arrow is not related to the duration of the activity. And you see also dotted lines, dotted lines, mean that we have here basically the uh, dummy activities which are necessary to build the network. Now the activity on the arrow uh, method and the arrow diagramming method were with the first ways to create uh, network diagrams. It was also based on the activity on the arrow method that the critical path method was developed. We will look into that later. And now we can have a look at what we call the AOA and the PERT method. Um, basically, PERT is called Program Evaluation and Review Technique, and it was a method used for the planning of the Polaris nuclear missiles in the USA. Now, the PERT diagram is similar to the arrow diagram, and the only thing that's basically different is that elements of uncertainty are added to the duration estimates. Now, what we typically mean here is that every activity, whatever we do, it's not constant. Even when we do it exactly the way it should be, there are natural variations that we cannot avoid. So basically what's happening when we go somewhere or we do something, we will see that the time is not always the same. And based on this, we can calculate an average, and we can also calculate a standard deviation. And the PERT formulas that we use provide us with an expected duration with a 50% probability, which is A plus 4, M plus B divided by 6. A and B are respectively the optimistic and the pessimistic estimate. M is the most probable or the mode estimate. And of course, we have to divide by 6 because we have awaited average here. The standard deviation is given by B minus A divided by 6. 
We will talk about that later in this presentation. Anyway, you know that the PERT method is like the arrow diagram, but it has that probabilistic element included in it. Now, slowly people were going to change into different ways of creating the network diagram. And typically the activity on the node methods were developed where we have the precedence diagram method, the PDM, which is today the preferred uh, method to be used by the PMI. Uh, it doesn't mean that those other methods are not good enough. They have their advantages, but they are a little bit more complex. And what we also do here, the critical path method, which has been typically defined on the PERT networks, they can be used on the precedence diagramming method also together with the PERT formula. So all these things can be applied on those different scheduling methods. So now you have an overview about scheduling the information or the importance of precedence information the how do we have to design the precedence diagram and I've shown you some examples of scheduling methods like the Gantt chart, the activity on the arrow methods and the activity on the node method. That was it for this presentation. Let's continue with the lesson in the next video. Thank you. Bye bye.